I just, I guess I just want the family to know that I'm truly sorry and I didn't have anything to do with this and I hope that Sydney is found very soon. She is a sweet, amazing girl. Um, I don't know. Babe, do you have anything else to say? I hope also that Sydney's found soon. We wish the family the best. We're sorry you're going through this. I mean, no disrespect to anyone. I wish Sydney the best. But as far as the police department, f you. Yeah. Hey, you and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this here video, we got um, one of them just crazy cases. It is the story of Sydney Loof, and it is just oof. This is one of those just absolutely batshit insane cases where the perpetrators were like giving the general public the inside scoop on what was going on and their view of things before the trial even began. Just bizarre footage they decided to take and share with the world while they were being hunted. And when it went to trial, it got even more insane. Like, you wouldn't think this was real. If it was a movie, it would suck for being unbelievable. We're talking vampires, we're talking cults. None of this makes sense, and it won't by the end of the video either, but god damn it, uh, oh. Let's just get into it. In November 2017, Sidney Loof was 24 years old, working as a store clerk in Lincoln, Nebraska. She had hit it off with a woman she met on Tinder, a woman by the name of Bailey Boswell. They had gone on a first date together and, uh, well, everything seemed grand. Um, so when a second date, the day after, was proposed, uh, Sydney gave that a hell yeah. Sydney Loof was last heard from via a Snapchat selfie with the caption, Ready for my date, before meeting Bailey Boswell on November 15th. Friends and family were immediately concerned when Sydney failed to show up for work the next day. Her car was still parked in the driveway of her home. Her mother reported her missing on November 16th. Thank you for all of your prayers. And uh, in my opinion, someone knows something. Please, please do the right thing. So as you can imagine, the police were pretty keen to talk to Bailey Boswell like right away. They found Bailey by, um, well Sydney had shown a picture of Bailey to one of her friends. After Sydney went missing, the friend went back on Tinder and essentially scrolled through till she found her, matched with her, got her number, sent it to police. So that's how they knew who they were looking for. But Bailey had gone on the run. Now just to be clear, at this point it was still a missing persons case. Spoiler alert, that's gonna change later. Sydney and Bailey had communicated via Tinder roughly 140 times leading up to the night of Sydney's disappearance. The last of those messages came from Bailey at 6.45 p.m., alerting Sydney that she was outside. And Bailey was not alone. You see, Sydney didn't just meet Bailey that night, she also met Bailey's boyfriend, 51 year old Aubrey Trail. And so when the police wanted to speak with them, both Aubrey and Bailey were Audi 5000. Is that still cool to say? You see, the police obtained a warrant to search their basement apartment, Bailey and Aubrey's, after the building's landlord reported that a strong odor of bleach emanated from downstairs. It was quickly determined that portions of the walls of the apartment had been wiped down in an effort to clean them. So with the police hot on their trail, both Aubrey and Bailey started uploading a series of just bizarre videos to social media, insisting they were innocent and that the police were trying to crucify them and that they were chasing them around like dogs. Bailey even admitted to having been with Sydney the night of her disappearance, as well as their previous date the night before, yet insisted that, although they'd hit it off, she hadn't seen her since. Here is the first video that was published on the 29th of November, about, about two weeks after Sydney uh, went missing. Good morning, Lincoln and Omaha and probably several other places. This is Aubrey Trail and this is Bailey Boswell. I guess y'all also know her as Audrey. 
But we spent the last few days watching ourselves being slammed and crucified in the newspapers and the news and everything else, so we thought it was time we had our say. Uh, we're not trying to defend anything. We're not trying to make you believe anything. We just feel we should get to say our side since everyone else gets to say theirs. The Lincoln Police Department apparently wants everyone to believe that we're hiding, that we haven't talked to them, that we're avoiding them. Actually, we've spoken to the Lincoln Police Department a couple of times. Uh, we also, through my attorney, Doug Mertz in Falls City, Nebraska, please verify, we both wrote long statements and sent to the Lincoln Police Department telling them everything we know. They're telling you that they have all these leads, that Sydney was last seen in um, Wilbur and such. What they're not telling you is that we are the two people who gave them all these leads. As far as I know, I'm not wanted for anything. I'm a person of interest and I'm not really running from anything. I mean, naturally I can't go home now because my house has been swarmed, searched, and I'm being looked for. But, uh, and I assume that I have a warrant out of state somewhere now. So that kind of cancels that out. So uh, this has pretty much cost me my life. And uh, I appreciate that from the Lincoln Police Department and the FBI and all those other agencies. But uh, I pray for Sydney. I hope she's found soon. Um, I wish the family the best. Uh, I'm sorry that she wasn't with you on Thanksgiving. And that's pretty much all I can say for now. I'm just kind of want to tell you what I've already told the Lincoln police more than one time. I met her on a Tuesday. We drove around Lincoln, smoked weed, had a great time. We hit it off. I dropped her off at home, picked her up the next night at her house. We drove around, smoked weed again, made our way to my house where we smoked wax and shatter. And I gave her a quarter ounce of some really good weed. Uh, I went to take her home and she asked me to drop her off at a friend's house. So I did so. I gave her my number. We were planning to go to the casino that weekend. Um, I mean, I haven't heard from her since. I just, I really don't even know what else to say. I've been seeing all this stuff on the news presses and the magazines and the news and... It's all lies. And another, this was uploaded on the 30th of November, the day after. Hi folks, I'll be trailed here. Uh, a few little things I want to talk about. I've been watching all day. I just watched the news. That's why I'm making this. First thing I want to clarify is the news uh, just reported that our uh, contact with the police in Lincoln never took place. Well, let me assure you that it did. So if we're going to talk, let's try to get it straight. I mean, I, the police can say or do what they want, as I can, so you'll believe what you believe. But I've been watching a lot of posts and comments today. So, so far today, from the comments, uh, we have apparently murdered this lady. We have apparently put her into human trafficking and sold her. And not only did we do that, we used the money. We went to the casino that weekend and used the money that we sold her for. Bailey didn't drop her in a friend's house. She dropped her off at her drug dealer's house, Bailey's, according to the comments you guys are making. Because uh, I've never made an excuse for anything I've done in my life. I do what I do. Be it, if I'm a thief, I'm a thief, but I mean, goddamn, I've never killed anyone in my life. I've never hurt a female in my life, so take that for whatever the hell it's worth. And oh yeah, thanks for the comment about I'm not very intelligent and uh, I'm stupid and all this. Appreciate that. Uh, but your opinion is your opinion. You know, think what you want, do what you want. The officers in this investigation have the people of Wilbur scared to death. Uh, they don't understand. They didn't know that people like us were living next to them. What the hell is people like us? People with criminal histories. Did you check my criminal history? Forgery. Bad checks. Theft. That's it. I mean, not saying I'm a nice guy. I'm a crook. I'm a thief. I've been all my life. Okay? But I'm not what you're trying to make me out to be. I've been goddamned if I'm going to be stand here and be accused of doing something to someone you pretty much blatantly said that we murdered this girl. You blatantly said that we've sold her into some kind of trafficking. 
This is just, it's ridiculous, it's ludicrous. Federal agents eventually found Bailey and Aubrey in a hotel near Branson, Missouri, on November 30th, the day the second video was taken, and brought them back to Nebraska for an unrelated charge. They had transported stolen goods from Kansas to Nebraska. With the suspects in custody, police found an additional disturbing clue. Footage of Aubrey inside a Menards in Lincoln, Nebraska, the day Sydney went on her last date. At approximately 10.35 a.m. on that date, Aubrey Trail and Bailey Boswell were seen purchasing the tools and supplies believed to have been used in the dismemberment and disposal of Sydney Loof. And the first of Sydney's remains were discovered on December 4th. The first. It was found in a ditch after investigators saw an arm sticking out of a trash bag. Most of her internal organs were gone, including her tongue, kidney, and heart. They knew it was Sydney based on the tattoo she had on her arm. Six months later, Aubrey Trail and Bailey Boswell were charged with Sydney's murder. Aubrey then told local media that it was a sex act gone wrong that ended her life. In another interview, he said she died of accidental asphyxiation. Aubrey's defense attorney expanded on his client's argument during the trial's opening statements, arguing Sydney's death was entirely accidental and not planned. Aubrey Trail is not a nice man, no shit. But I submit to you that with respect to the charges of first degree murder and conspiracy to murder, he has told the truth throughout, said the defense attorney. It was completely unplanned. The parties were engaged in erotic asphyxiation designed to heighten the sexual pleasure of Sidney Loof. The next horrible, poor, bad decision was made and that was to remove the body in pieces. The attorney added that Aubrey and Sydney had a closer relationship than people think, and that she willingly participated in his and Bailey's sexual fantasy group. The lawyer said Aubrey and Bailey traveled with two other young women who'd recently left their sexual fantasy group, and they wanted Sydney to be a replacement. And Sydney Booth talked about an Aubrey trail. No, there's no indication. Talk about a male person at all? No. According to Aubrey, when Sydney accidentally died, he panicked and dismembered her body and put it in his trunk. The prosecution called bullshit. They believe Aubrey's excuse is a lie and that police have enough evidence to suggest that it is a fabrication. The prosecution claimed Aubrey and Bailey planned on killing somebody and used social media to lure them. Aubrey and Bailey decided on Sydney. They then bought a hacksaw, duct tape, utility knives, trash bags, and bleach. The prosecution claimed this was done right before Sydney disappeared. Which, you know, they had um, video footage of them buying tools in a supply store, so. The store store video shows them both in the store for 12 minutes. They purchase a hacksaw, tin snips, drop cloths, and utility knife. It appears that while Sydney was on a date with Bailey, Aubrey strangled her with an extension cord and then used a fine-toothed saw to dismember her body. Miss Loop's body was cut into 14 pieces. Uh, we found 13 of those pieces. The, the piece of her body we did not find would be the upper left arm from just above her elbow to just below her shoulder. After an extensive search, authorities found Sydney's body in several garbage bags, about an hour and a half drive from her apartment complex, just outside of Lincoln. Aubrey pleaded guilty to one of the three charges he is facing, improper disposal of human remains, and pleaded not guilty to the two other charges, first degree murder, which can be punishable by the death penalty in Nebraska, and conspiracy to commit murder. During the trial, Aubrey painted a picture of himself as a sex cult leader who called himself a vampire and daddy and had a dozen witches who he told would gain powers if they went out and tortured and killed people for him. Yeah, and this goes even further. Three young women, ordered by the judge to remain anonymous, shared their testimonies. Yeah, things definitely get even weirder, lads. One of them, a 22-year-old, 
said she met Bailey on Tinder during the summer of 2017 and was convinced to start traveling with the group after Aubrey bought her clothing and manicures and began giving her a $200 weekly allowance. The woman testified that Aubrey invited her to join his cult, members of which he called his witches, which entailed engaging in group sex and helping him steal and sell antiques. She said she called Aubrey daddy, and he referred to himself as the vampire. Aubrey Trail claimed he had supernatural powers like mind reading, the ability to fly, and to put Bailey in a trance. He also told the woman that she had to torture and kill someone to join, claiming that she would gain more powers if the victim were tortured for hours. A list of around a dozen women's names was found in Bailey's bag, listing special powers for each woman, like Healer and Sea Danger. Just like the X-Men, Bailey was the Queen Witch and was called Mommy. One unidentified woman said she was told ritualistic killings were meant to be conducted in the woods at a certain moon stage. The woman testified that she never saw the couple murder anyone during her time in the group, although Aubrey once threatened to kill her family if she revealed the group's activities, bragging that he had killed several people before. That part is still unconfirmed, but it seems like Sydney's murder was premeditated and seems like he may have killed other people as well. He was a madman, not in a good way. And then, just a few weeks ago, as the trial is currently ongoing, Aubrey decided to interrupt his murder trial, and he stabbed himself in the neck just as a witness took the stand. Bailey is innocent and I curse you all, he declared, before slicing his throat and collapsing from his wheelchair. I guess he wanted his, like, dying breath to cause misfortune to everyone. I mean, he did think he was a vampire. Jesus Christ. It is unclear what he stabbed himself with, either a pen or a small blade. A stretcher was brought into the courtroom and Aubrey was put on an ambulance to be taken to hospital. Bailey Boswell's trial is expected to begin in October. Aubrey's, um, I guess whenever he's healed from the old, uh, I guess his trial will begin after that. But yeah. So we'll just have to wait and see if this trial will get any more bizarre, if that's possible. And that's the story of uh, Sidney Loof, Bailey Boswell, and Aubrey Trail. Serious shite going on. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you'd like to see some more of my videos, please subscribe if you'd like to, and I will see you, as always, real soon in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Mike out.